I thought I was going to be actually in a little room of like 40 people. Um, and I haven't really... Okay, well, this is it. And I wanted actually everyone to introduce themselves. Um, so that we, I don't know, maybe we can actually just quickly everyone go around and just say your name because we were here last night and we couldn't really... It'd just be nice to know who, who's in this room. So do you want to go around and just say your name? Who are you? What's your name? Yeah, you... Come on. Yaka. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Carry on. Who's, who's who? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hi. Maybe we just, just, you all from the back rows move to the front, so it will yeah. be a lot more cozier. Okay, so there will be not so much room. Okay, and so. Carry on in like yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Let's feel, feel, feel the first rows. Come on, everybody, some energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are so So now it feels slow. a bit like a workshop. <laughs> You can keep saying your names. Who's, who's, who? Hi. Nice to meet you. We can all say it together. Just shout out your names, then we can get started. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, now I feel like, okay, cool, we're connected. Um, so I helped launch Product Design Guild in actually Slovenia on Monday. Um, it's an organization that um, I brought back from San Francisco. Um, when I was living there for a year, when I accidentally fell into tech. Um, and the concept is that it's a room of uh, designers and tech people, and we um, show each other our work, we help each other out, we work collaboratively. Because um, from my experience at art school, at design school, I suppose because we were all working on the same project, we were all really competitive, and it was nothing like my dream experience of like the you know, art school, Andy Warhol factory, none of that. Um, so when I was in San Francisco at the Product Design Guild and everyone was being so helpful and like not holding back their ideas and giving me my ideas, I give them back ideas, I just, I thought that was actually the thing I was going to miss the most when I come back to London. And I had to go back to London because I didn't have my visa. So I decided to launch, launch it in London um, and then haven't really done anything since September because I'm now working at Firestarter. And Firestarter is a provide seed stage capital to European startups and help make those crucial connections to help accelerate your business. Um, so, next. So, I'm going to talk about product and to find out product is what makes a great product is um, it consists of three sort of facets that we need to be aware of is business, customer, and requirements and constraints. Um, business is like you can't build a product without a great business model. It has to survive businesses' money. It's what makes your product survive and you survive as well. And the customer, it's all about the customer, obviously, and requirements and constraints. It's, you know, you have to check that it's technically feasible um, and also budget restraints. So there's all these factors that come in. So um, how, how, do, how are we going to put this all together and how do we, yeah. I'm just going to have a think about how do I do that. Um, um, so how do we have like great ideas? Like, for example, Instagram. Um, when, I mean, more, it was, this was probably more applicable before when it was all about apps. And now technology has moved much more to like wearables and it's much more part of our actual life. You know, it's not so much all focused around our mobile phone, but at the time it was like, okay, so let's look at real life situations. How do we turn them and put them in our mobile? So in some ways, Instagram reinvented the camera um, and gave us all the features that our nice little SLR cameras had. Um, the um, Twitter and the mobile phone that they, I mean, it was a reimagination of news, news feed, real time, sharing and all that. Um, and then Flipboard was reimagining like your pile of magazines, um, so much to read and all the content online, let's all put it in one place and make it and design it, make it look, you know, great user interface and user experience. Um, and so in this talk, we're going to talk about 
or what design is. It's also obviously aesthetic, about aesthetics, about looking good. It's about so, it solves problems and it's innovative. Um, the uh, design elements and principles, I'd probably say my top three rules would be to be aware of the color charts, the color wheel, and that, which I don't have here, but basically it's, if you just memorize that, that you need opposite colors on the wheel so that they contrast each other, so things, I, things pop out. Um, and also, for example, um, uh, tertiary colors, or, you know, along the lines, those are all, they, they work nicely together. So often on a website, for example, you'd want your complementary colors on your homepage, and when you scroll down on your fitter, you're gonna have tertiary colors. Um, so, um, yeah, your fitter. Um, and then, um, it solves problems, it's a, there's a process. So a lot of, a lot of on during this conference, everyone's been talking about, uh, not everyone, but Lean Canvas and all that stuff. And it actually completely mirrors um, the design process. It's, it's, it's absolutely the same. So there's nothing really like revolutionary to hear like uh, how to build products and your business. It's, it's an, an absolute reflection. And uh, design thinking is, uh, uh, is ba basically that process and putting it into um, making that happen. So the design process as we know it, uh, in agencies, for example, is uh, you do you do you discover, define, develop, and deliver. Discover is doing research. Um, defining is like making finding obviously your direction. You build a brief, you build it, and then you send it off. But deliver it ends then. That's slightly the uh, problem. Um, we'll go back to that because deliver, end of, and that's a problem. Um, but anyway, design thinking is also about, um, um, and also designing is always, always designing for someone and putting the other person first um, and around that. So it's always human-centered, it's about people, culture, context. Um, it's about learning by making. So when you're building your products, you, um, you have to launch it out. To, you launch it out to the real world. See how it interacts with people. Then bring it back and feed it and and you know um, fix it. So almost if it was a person, like when you're growing up and you're using new experiences and stuff, you just build. You're, you're you know you're building yourself up. And participation. So it's learning by by participa participation, not just like uh, building something and leaving it out there and see what happens and end of. Um, so you can start doing lots of sketches and it's like, whoa. Um, and so at this point, this was for Firestarter, we're building a project um, and deal flow, like how the whole investment process and all the different um, ways that we get inbound and outbound deals. So I've been looking at that. And so, but I find myself a little bit in a waterfall effect where I'm on my own and I need to speak to the rest of the team. So it's like this, where you deliver. Waterfall, which probably everyone knows, is, and which designers do a lot, sometimes you find yourself as a designer on your own, working on your own and expected to do everything alone. Um, but in fact, the best way to work together is as a team. Um, with your, this is your dream team, your hustler, hipster, and hacker. I would say I'm a, a hustling hipster. Um, so hustler is your business guy, so it goes back to that. Uh, business, you know, hustler, customer, blah, blah, blah. Hipster, hacker, dream team. Um, and then you all work together. Um, on the business model canvas would be ideal before you start even building anything and um, with everyone on your team because everyone has something uh, interesting to bring. Um, and then it, you, and then in fact, you just get your, it's a, a great brainstorming session um, and the designer should be in that session, not because he's a design thinker, he has a process, he'll be working with your customer, He's the one who's going to be like communicating visually every time you tell him everything to do or her to do. Um, he, he, it's almost like they gather all the information and they visually communicate. So it's great to have them on board earlier on and create that team. Um, okay, so we're ready. Uh, we, we think we've got a good, great idea. We can build. Um, and we start off with post-its as well. And... Um, Start turning, because you're, okay, creating, say, a product, it's a website, a website, but it's a product, it's a business. You want to start, you've, you've figured out all these little elements from this stuff. You put them in, you know, put them out, out there, create a plan. 
and you plan your journey, um, how is your customer going to uh, interact with your product online, but also offline, the entire service that you're going to offer? Um, but um, also, you need to know, obviously, who your customer is and also who you are so that you can get lucky um, and build a successful company. Um, but um, I think I just want to mention also, um, you need to create a product that has trust and transparency and integrity. Um, for example, uh, um, Okay, I bumped into a um, product designer on the plane uh, on my way here, and he's working with security and stuff like that. And he was show explaining how, for example, um, it was a great coincidence, but how Google, for example, has lost its integrity because it's uh, like taking all our data and using it, you know, all that stuff that's going on. Uh, Facebook and uh, buying the uh, Oculus thing to create potentially virtual friends for us or something. So anyway, so it's important to have trust and uh, to build something driven by, um, it's just have integrity really, not, not greed and money. So, okay, so you want this perfect relationship between your product and your customer. Um, and so you need to know who your customer is, who is this person. Um, and it's great to like um, sort of, so you, yeah, there's all techniques. There's the five whys, who, what, why, when, and how. When would they be engaging with your product? What device are they, would they be using? What are their habits? What are their needs? Um, you know, go to coffee shops, interview people, find out because actually all of your solutions are, are held within people. And, and so it's great to um, engage with them. Um, recently, I've been working with... Um, or just say, you could get really far, basically, really like, really delve quite deeply and go into their world, live like they do. You'll find so much about them. Um, yep, and that's, and you create a persona template. Um, you find out their bio their, and demographics, their behaviors, uh, create stories and scenarios that you define them in. This would also help you find out how to launch your product, how they, it gives a look, you know, how they, they live and their goals and their needs. Um, okay, so then you have to figure out who you are. So in order to have this awesome relationship, you need to build your brand around something that they would like. So that, um, and so you want to create like a personality as well. Um, and um, what's helpful, so that also in your homepage, for example, you want to communicate very quickly because you're any more often this time. And you can do it with images, but it's great to have a one-liner. So, for example, for Firestarter, as I said earlier on, Firestarter is a new digital venture platform which syndicates investments with sex-relevant angels and provides meaningful introductions to accelerate the success. Oh my God, it's so long. But anyway, you need a one-liner on your homepage and also you need to use it later on when you're networking and when you're speaking to your customers and all that to always have that one-liner ready to deliver. So that you're, because from the very beginning that you're researching, those are, that's your, going to be your customer, your, your early adopters. And Yo-Yo is another, uh, product that Biosite invested in and that I worked on, building the MVP, and that Yo-Yo is a marketing platform for modern retailers powered by mobile payments. Um, transact with your customers and not your payment provider. Okay, so you've run out of time. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at, we're just gonna talk about how to prototype and some of my personal favorite tools. Everyone has different techniques, but I love Adobe Illustrator. Um, and I love just using actually my mobile phone. I can sketch, I do little drawings, um, we'll see. Um, and you, I, I don't know if you know Pop. Does anyone know Pop? Yeah, yeah. So it's awesome, it's like, uh, yeah, you just take a photo and then you've got like a little highlighter, like the green stuff, and that becomes a button. And you, you highlight all your pictures and then you can suddenly like make, create this little prototype, it's so cool. Um, so that would be your early stage for a mock-up. Then you want to go next stage, and often you, the problem I find is that you'll do sketches, or even if I use Adobe Illustrator, and people don't realize that it's, it's still work in progress. And you get judged immediately going, you know, well, you maybe should do this or that, la, la, and it's like, I haven't finished, you know. Um, so it's great to use Balsamic, because clearly it's not finished, it's still work in progress. And this is great for user experience as well. 
um, especially for UX. And then you get different stages of development of how more of the precision you'll get with your product. Um, so there's a little bit more detailed, and then you, I think this is using Axure, get more little, you know, you, you descriptions of how things work. Um, so I'm just going to like run through um, my sort of development of YoYo, the MVP, um, and this is what now the finished product of that. I didn't design this, but um, that's what it looks like now. Um, and so I had to, so this, um, I had to. Yeah, so Yo Yo, basically, I met this guy. Well, they were looking for a user experience designer, and because I run Product Design Guild, I like know loads of like UX people. Um, so anyway, I found myself in the meeting, meeting up with coffee, wasting. My, I thought it was going to be a complete waste of time, and he was telling me about Yo Yo, which is going to be a loyalty platform, but. And the end goal is that they're going to pick up all this data, and then they're going to be able to push, send you push notifications when you're around, and know your deals, and they'll get to know you better, so you have more like sort of focused deals. Um, so, but it's loyalty. So I looked out the, in the real world, um, loyalty. These are what loyalty cards look like. I, look, I went around, hanged around. They wanted to launch at Imperial College, so I started hanging around at Imperial College, making friends with the guys there, interviewing them, seeing how they behaved, what drinks did they buy, um, what was the, uh, coffee, uh, the areas around imagining that they would be, that Yo-Yo now exists, and how would they engage with it? What would they like? What kind of guys, what can, you know, they're 19-year-olds, I'm like a decade older, they have different tastes. Um, so I just wanted to know, yeah, what they would like, so I can make something that they would want to use. Um, so again, uh, just like then went off and did loads of sketches and played with the, with the name Yo-Yo, of how, how can I not? Um, and obviously the movement of a yo-yo, which I thought was super cool. And um, these are some of the sketches. So, okay, so I can run through. The, I the idea was that, because there's all these, like, I, c I saw a similarity between, obviously, a yo-yo circle and the, the loyalty cards. Um, and the circle also represented uh, coins and money and stuff like that. So maybe play with that. And also, the, and then with... Um, Apps as well. There's like you can, you know, really cool animations you could do with. So it would be great to be to benefit from that. Um, so I thought maybe like, like it was a bit like the Starbucks app. I don't know if you've seen it, but every time like you bought a coffee, you get this like lovely little star like drops into in, into one of the circles, and it feels really satisfying. It's like it just feels great. So I wanted to do uh, like. Well, great. But um, I just wanted to do some to play with something like that, but maybe make make it more bouncy. So it's like the the maybe the yo-yo, the you know, just fell back into its hole every time you'd like bought a coffee. So you'd get addicted as well. You thought it was really fun. You get addicted to like spending with yo-yo. And so these are some of the coins. I looked as well at uh, Foursquare and all the different sort of like prizes you could give them for the different levels of loyalty. Um, and these are some of the sketches. Um, it's, yeah, something like that. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, then I, you looked at the problems you would have, that there would be lots of different sort of, um, you know, they wouldn't just be having coffee at Imperial, but lo loads of different shops. So how do I put this all in? Maybe it's like you, you know, the simple version, maybe just complete a yo-yo, a, a circle. And... Um, so, I don't know, you can see, but here we also did like a, a, a mind node, like a mind map of the ex entire experience from buying to as well the, um, the problems you would have with um, uh, all the technical within the app as well, all the like logging in, giving your deb debit card details, uh, verification, blah, 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 so many steps. And all these little steps then turn into these little elements on your user interface. And then you use your three laws of user interface, colors, uh, um, uh, yeah, I don't know, how do you say that word? Uh, proportions and blah, blah, blah. Okay, a lot of these are more movements that we had. Uh, or the simple version, nice, nice little circle. This would be like really, really simple. And this ended up being our, um, MVP looked a bit like that, and I literally did it 
that bit I did in one day in like 11 hours. And it was actually really good to have like time constraints because I could have gone on forever and ever. And so this is it, this is, I mean, I, I don't actually really like it in some ways, but whatever I had to do, you know, that this is it. So it's really good to actually, and I'm, to give people like, you know, deadlines, otherwise you're gonna go on forever. Um, and this is the gamification approach. Um, some of my inspirations, Tom Cruise, and then the more sketches. Sketches just goes on and on. Okay, and yeah, here you can see actually that's the whole user journey. And balsamic mockups. How how do you transfer that? They, you know, you can see little you know match moments, the interaction moments into elements. Um, this is what the Um, yep, these are more ideas, lots of ideas. Okay, so this is the final project, what it now looks like, um, and much simpler, um, super, super simple. We, I suppose we've kept the circle, um, and what we, they have done with the QR code, it has a little bounce up, so there's a little bit of the animation, it's quite fun, so you can do download it, it's just yayay.com, but it's only available in a few places in London. Uh, okay, I, why I'm doing this because because I think it was the launch. Okay, so we managed actually. This is more of a fire starter success story, where through that MVP that we did when we were with our investors. So we just used like you can just use pop. We had something to show them. We hadn't built anything. They had a team together. Uh, they managed to raise 1.2 million dollars. But also because I mean the CEO is X Visa. He is also. Uh, an investor, so he knows how to, he's a great hustler. Um, and we also managed to, we got our Mike Butcher thing because we met him in San Francisco, we made friends, he thought we were awesome. We had a great time as a team as well. So it goes back to, I think what I want to show was that how when you're working collaboratively as well, how, how, and you get along, how great it is for your product because you really open up, you're not scared to like express yourself and your ideas and you work collectively. And so I was able to tell them, like, actually, although this is nice, it, like, I think it lacks a bit of personality and character. Um, so th they then built this, and we had fun. I mean, this is completely what their personality is like. Keep the change, you filthy animal. And it's a, a piggy, you know, it's, it's like fun. And, that's, and we actually do have fun. And it's great to see this is uh, the product in action. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, yeah. So I, I think maybe, I think I'm doing that, I think because I think the designers are sometimes like just used as a service. And sometimes you can see that one of my point is, is that how when you, you know, working together, you know, designers make actually great CEOs, great founders. Airbnb, for example, one of their founders was a designer and stuff like that. So it's not about just don't tell your designer just to do it, get him involved. Um, and that is it. And I thought we were going to be a workshop and I would have said if we were less people that we'd do a little mini product design guild. Um, but, but I don't know if anyone has, what time is it? What time is it? 10 minutes. Well, I mean, we could, you know, I think we should break up and actually network. Oh, I didn't, oh what q and A's? Do you have questions? Okay, questions. Okay, well, I... Yeah. Not everyone uh, at one time, please. <laughs> uh, what do you do? Designing furniture. Oh, really? Yeah, made of cardboard. Wow. Yeah. And that reminds me of the next question. I, I saw. And I'm not the product Wait, designer. Longer. I'm a business guy, actually. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, I just had no money for furniture, so I had to build it on my own. Pardon? I didn't have enough money, so I had to build my furniture on my own, and I just had cardboard at home, so <laughs> made a business out of it. Um, what can Firestarter? Well, Product Design Guild can do more for you probably than Firestarter. Okay. But unless, if you build your product, actually, if you want to sell your furniture online and it's cardboard, and it's build it yourself cardboard like that, or is it really thick so that you can actually sit on it and stuff? No, it's just by folding. It's not like yeah, 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 yeah. And you can actually sit on the chairs and stuff like that. Yeah, we put yeah, like yeah, cool. 250 kilos on one chair. So. Okay, awesome. It, <laughs> I'm just thinking about the trees. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, well, yeah, sh show us your websites. Yeah. Cool. 
Hello. So, uh, what if you have like a design feeling, but you don't have a uh, like a design education? So, how do you make sure that you don't miss something? How, where did, should you start, or what should you look for? For designing, how do you start designing? Yes, if you have a feeling about design, but you don't have a formal education, so you might might miss something like colors, like you mentioned. Oh, the fuck that. You don't, who cares, really? Like, <laughs> that doesn't matter. Never have they asked about my, my degree. Like, it, it, it's really not the point. You just, as long as you have the tools to know how to design, you just need the tools. So, I don't know what, what you, that comes in so many mediums. I mean, you could just use the Adobe Creative Suites. Maybe that's your tool. But it could actually be a camera as your tool, or you're an a interior designer. But, but, yeah, you just want to make it happen. You want to build it, right? What, 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 what kind of, like, designing would you like to do? Uh, uh, let's say website design or application design, but I'm more ask not about the sketches, but yeah. when the, you need to make a real design, so how do you make sure that the people will like it? So how do you make sure that people will like it? Well, well, you have to have taste, good taste to start with, and if you have good taste, they will follow. I mean, you, 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 yeah, yeah, good taste. Keep it simple as well. Hi. Um, do you think that uh, you can be a, a good uh, UI and UX designer in a one person? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. There's loads as well to learn online about user experience. Design and in fact that would that's like awesome that would yeah that's great and so also but then the thing is can you also be a front end developer can you also code that's more the I think the issue yeah if you can like that like that's like, can I hire you hi um, it's me Andre from the Labs oh, here ah. <laughs> first row <laughs> <laughs> yeah I uh, have a question like as a PM like I often work with clients where I have to sketch out what new products, go with new products, and I'm wondering like, how you see the role of a PM compared to the role of designer, like when building new products and yeah. so mockups, wireframes and all that things. Yeah, I get that. Like, so, yeah, because product managers also know how to do like balsamic and mock-up, and I, I do find that like a bit my, you know, it's a bit annoying. It's actually annoying, to be honest. It annoys me, but I mean, it's not rocket science anyway, so why cannot a product manager know how to do that? But as well, like saying that before, they're bringing something different to the table anyway. So they're doing the mock-up. It's a version. And sometimes also because their mind is much simpler, they're not thinking about the UI as well. So probably they can just you know, go straight to the point. And then a designer can like, you know, make it like, better. But I don't, you, you know, you're always working with egos. And, and you must always like, be sensitive as well like, to, to the people you're working with. But um, uh, they can equally, it's, you know, designing is innate as well. So it's fine. But, yeah, just be careful how you, you know, treat other people nicely. But, right. <laughs> okay, next question. Cool. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, on another another one, uh, do you also know how to, how to code, or you just? Uh, yeah, I did. I learned uh, HTML, CSS, a bit of JavaScript with Code Academy. No, and I did no. I started with W three schools, so I didn't do the gamification version. So I had to like use my memory more, and I think I actually learned more from W three schools than mm -hmm. Code Academy. And I learned how to build like websites. They're pretty. Cr they're crap, but I know how to like suddenly hack. I know to suddenly like on the product design of the website to like you know, the server go, put my HTML, yeah, yeah. You have to learn how to code if you want to do UI, UX, because then you're free to just get on and do some great stuff. But, yeah. Okay, thanks. More question? Okay. I go to Amsterdam a few, now. A few, more, <laughs> a few more photos. Then next question. <laughs> Um, All right, yeah, there, today. Yeah, hi. Uh, do you think that there are fields where pretty design uh, like bothers people instead of uh, 
attracting them. For example, making apps for scientific community and such. Making what, sorry? Apps for the scientists. Yeah. Then if it's too pretty, they're not going to take it seriously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, pretty is... It, ha it has to be simple and beautiful. I mean, you then do your one-liner that says, I do this, boom, you know, and it looks good, you know, face it. You know, that's okay. But, but don't, do, don't be de decorative and... Yeah, you have to be professional, though, so it's medical. So it has to be clean and slick. It doesn't have to be grey, boxy, Microsoft Word, your Outlook, look. It, it can still be clean. I think they expect it anyway. It's a clinical environment. So, yeah, it can be... It should be actually pretty. That's what it is. Mm. All righty, then. One more? No more? All right. And one big applause. Thank you. Thank you. And, and also, so, there's, so Product Design Guild has now launched in Ljubljana. So there's one in November. So we've got, so, yeah, we've got Shiva Jalovec is organizing it. If you'd like to join and bring your work, it does, it's fine. Product managers are, are invited, developers as well. Um, anyone to do with product, all the stakeholders are invited. Um, yeah, so come along. Um, I think we'll have details. How are you going to keep in touch with everyone? I will have, I'll You'll set up the, the website. Info, yeah, on the Product Design Guild website. Yeah, exactly. Oh. You're all registered, so you will receive emails, updates, and everything. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Pink. Time for coffee.